Matthew chapter 26 verses 36 to 46. Reading from the New American Standard Bible. The Garden of Gethsemane. Starting in verse 36. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane, and told his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. And he took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee with him, and began to be grieved and distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is deeply grieved, to the point of death, remain here and keep watch with me. Continuing in verse 39. And he went a little beyond them, and fell on his face and prayed, saying, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. And he came to the disciples and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, So, you men could not keep watch with me for one hour? Keep watching and praying, so that you do not come into temptation, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Continuing in verse 42. He went away again a second time and prayed, saying, My father, if this cup cannot pass away unless I drink from it, your will be done. Again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. And he left them again, and went away and prayed a third time, saying the same thing once more. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Behold, the hour is at hand and the Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let's go, behold, the one who is betraying me is near. Hi, welcome back to Waiting in Laodicea. I'm your host A.T. Martinez and today well, we're going to do our Easter special. We're going to do something a little different. We're going to talk about the frailty of humanity and the time, the one point, or one of those few points where the humanity of Christ showed the most. We need to go to Matthew 26, starting in verse 36, going to verse 46. I'll be reading from the New American Standard Bible, and this is entitled, this section is entitled, The Garden of Gethsemane. Now, and starting in 36, then Jesus came upon them to a place called Gethsemane, and he told his disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. And he took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee with him, and began to be grieved and distressed. And then he said to them, my soul is deeply grieved to the point of death. Remain here and keep watch with me. And 39. And he went a little beyond them and fell on his face and prayed, saying, My father, if it is possible that this cup pass for me, yet not as I will, but as you will. And he came, came, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So you men could not keep watch with me for one hour. Keep watching and praying so that you do not come into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. In 42. And he went away a second time and prayed, saying, My father, if this cup cannot pass away unless I drink from it, your will be done. Again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. And he left them again and went away and prayed a third time, saying the same thing once more. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners get up let's go behold the one who has betrayed me is near <laughs> now why do I find this uh, this verse the perfect Easter verse now, for us as the Laodicean church we are Peter and the two Ze sons of Zebedee which is one of which is John simple task stay awake and keep, and keep watchful for the, keep watch for the Lord what did we do we fell asleep and the famous line the flesh is willing the soul is willing but the flesh is weak applies to so many of us we refuse we don't we want to do good we want to follow the Lord. We want to do what we're supposed to do. But we fail. We end up falling asleep. 
Now, how many times do you, when you sit there and decide, and you've set your prayer time, at first in your life, you'll find that it's so easy to fall asleep and got to keep praying. Why? Because the flesh is weak. Now, what makes this so special to me is, let's go ahead and we're going to go up to the very, very first paragraph here. Down just a little more. There we go. Jesus prays to God and says, My Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. He plays this three times. Three times he asks for the cup to go to another. And the second paragraph, his phrase is... My father, if this cup cannot pass away unless I drink from it, your will be done. Now, this to me is one of the most powerful passages I've read. Because Christ, he's afraid. He describes it. He tells them that in the very first paragraph that he is, he is deeply grieved to the point of death remain here and keep watch with me he's sad he's um, almost seems fearful but he's not afraid it's, he doesn't want to die he doesn't want this to happen yet and many of us know how that feels we don't want to, things to happen yet but yet his answer to this is perfect not my will, but yours. If this cup can pass from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. Now that, now think about it. He knows he's going to be crucified. He knows. I mean, if you, as you read these few paragraphs, he knows he's being betrayed right there. Judas Iscariot is already betray betraying him to the uh, to the t to the people of the temple. Why? Now well, the betrayal of Judas is another topic, but real quickly, Judas most likely thought he could push Christ into acting. <coughs> Excuse me, folks. Did he? No because we don't get to choose God's plan. A lot is made up of, a lot is talked about how Judas just betrayed Jesus and how everyone has a betrayer. And The point is, Judas did what was planned. He betrayed Christ. And Christ knew this was happening. We know this all throughout the book of Matthew and, and the story of the crucifixion. Christ knew in advance what was happening. Now, so he's not a blind goat. He's not the sacrificial goat that doesn't know what's going on. He knows. And he's grieved by this. And he states, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Now, that, to me, is the most human thing that Christ says throughout his whole ministry. But he goes better than us. Because he immediately states, Yet not as I will, but as you will. How often do we go to the Lord and say, Lord, please don't wait don't let this happen. Please, Lord, don't make me do this. How often are we put in a situation where we know we're gonna face not death, but ridicule? And we do our best to get out of it. If we even go to the Lord in prayer, we simply ask don't not to do this. We try to find ways to justify getting out of what we've been told to do. Jesus didn't justify it. He didn't try to make excuses. He didn't try to slither out. He stated, yet not as I will but as you will now I look at this story and this story to me it's human but it's also the most it's 
one of the most powerful sections. Because let's face it, if I had been Jesus, I wouldn't have gone to Jerusalem. Forget that. They're going to whack me there? Mm -mm, ain't happening. Let me rephrase that. I wouldn't have gone on my own. I'd like to believe that they've given the choice of going to Jerusalem where I've been told to go or running and hiding that I would not pull a Jonah. I've pulled too many Jonas in my life. Christ didn't pull a Jonah. He went. So the first chance he had to get out of it, he didn't take it. He went to Jerusalem knowing it would be a death sentence. Does he run does he hide and try to keep low while he's in Jerusalem? Nope, he continues doing what he was called to do. What he was told to do. Does he, you know, people sit back and go, well, he didn't really care. Yes, he did care. And we see that caring and that concern. Hold on, folks. Yes. Because military likes to play games with their planes. <laughs> Jesus knew what was going to happen. And he did have worries. He was grieved to the point of death. So saddened. But still went. He still got up. He still took John and Peter and the rest of the disciples. And he faced his accuser. And he went with them. He didn't stop it. He could have. He, there's a great song he could have called 10,000 angels but he didn't he went where he was supposed to go he was tried he was found guilty of nothing and he was executed he was taken out on the cross and I mean you see some of the stories and you see some of the movies that depict Christ we walked down the Via, Via Della Rosa the, to the to where they executed the people and they carried their own cross with them cross, Christ carried not only his cross but in that carrying he carried all of our crosses knowingly willingly and he, the cross was put up and he was executed for each and every one of us and sadly we like so many others pulled to what the disciples did we fell asleep later with Peter Peter denied him not once but three times we do this how many times do we deny Christ every day these are the things I'd like you to think about as we leave the Easter season. And yes, like most of modern Christian holidays, they're not on the right date. That's okay. It, isn't, it doesn't matter what day we celebrate. Because in reality, we should be celebrating Christ's birth and Christ's crucifixion every day. His birth led directly to his crucifixion which led to you and I sitting here talking about what he did so that we can improve our lives we need to be a lot more like Christ we need to be less inclined to the flesh and more receptive to the soul we need to do what we're told we need to follow God's example and walk boldly up on that hill to be crucified in God's name. This has been Waiting on Laodicea. This is our Easter special. And may each and every one of you remember, God died for you. Christ came to this earth, suffered, and a level of suffering that you and I will never fully grasp. Lord willing, we never will have to grasp that. Because he died on the cross, bereft from everything. He was cut off from, from God the Father at that time. He was so alone. 
And in my mind, that is the true definition of hell. So, if you've enjoyed the show, please hit the like button. Please, please subscribe. Get your friends, get your neighbors to subscribe. The subscription method is the easiest way you can support this ministry. If you'd like to su su support this ministry further, you can donate through this ch through this channel. You can go become a patron. You can go to our website, which is www.weebly. Oh, excuse me, waiting in Laodicea. Weebly. Com. Go check it out. See the different ways you can donate to us. Anything would be helpful. And if you you have time and you want to donate some energy and effort, let us know. Email us at waitingleodicea at gmail.com and we'll be glad to get back with you. May God bless each and every one of you and rejoice for he is risen. <laughs>